The next attribute we will look at is the BGP community. BGP communities are described in RFC 1997. The communities are a transitive attribute and they're optional. So you don't have to set them and indeed several operators make no use of BGP communities whatsoever. But in fact, BGP communities of all the attributes is probably one of the most useful and most powerful attributes when it comes to implementing BGP policies on the internet today. And we will be looking at communities in much more depth later on in this series. BGP community is a 32-bit attribute, but it's commonly represented today on the internet as two 16-bit integers. Uh, there was a supporting RFC, RFC 1998, which uh, was written by a network operator describing how they used the early BGP community when it first appeared in router implementations. And they represented it as two 16-bit integers, really because two 16-bit integers were easier for us humans to understand than uh, one long 32-bit integer was. So the common format used is inserting your local AS number, then a colon, and then another 16-bit integer, which is used to represent your local policy. It's not a standard format, but it's the commonly used convention today, as we'll see. There are a range of reserved communities in traditional IETF fashion. The first 65,000 and the last 65,000 are reserved. Now, communities are used to group destinations. And each destination can be a member of multiple communities. The destinations are defined by the network operator. There are no standard defined destinations as such. It's entirely up to the network operator what these destinations are. And as I hinted at, these are really useful for applying policies within and between autonomous systems. Let's have a look at an example just to show how they work. So in the days before BGP communities, a network operator would be connecting BGP customers or even normal standard statically connected customers. Every time they connect a customer, they would have to set up a BGP filter to allow that BGP announcement into the network. We've got AS300 here in the diagram, customer AS100 announcing a prefix. So we set up an incoming filter to allow 16 slash 16 inbound. That's all fine. But we want to give AS100 transit to our upstream provider in AS400. So we have to update the filter in our border router, router E, to allow 16 slash 16 out. That's fine as well. Certainly in the early internet days in the 90s, We'd, we had very few BGP features to let us do this without actually doing it in the maintenance period. Nowadays, it's much easier. And indeed, when BGP communities arrived, it made it much easier as well. In the early days before communities, we would have to shut down BGP on router E, the border router, and then bring it back up again. And that, of course, is disruptive. In the early internet days, it was less of an issue as the internet was not mission critical for many organizations and end users. Nowadays, it's unimaginable to shut down any connection just to update a configuration. So imagine what happens when a second customer comes along. Once I'm detained slash 16, we have to update our incoming filter to allow that prefix in and update our outbound filter to let that prefix out, which usually would mean another shut down BGP, bring it up again, and all the disruption that that caused. And there's also the management of BGP filters. I've only shown one border router to one upstream. What if you had more upstreams? What about if you had peers? What filters would we have to update to manage all this? And for a sizable network, this became really complicated to manage. Every time you add a customer, you have to make sure you have to update border filters everywhere across the network, or at least in the places across the network you wanted to allow this new prefix to have access to. So we ended up really with a management and manageability problem, never mind a scaling problem. So when BGP communities came along, can you imagine how this all changed? 
If we look at the diagram again now with communities in place, prefix comes in from AS100 onto router C. Sure, we still have our inbound prefix filter, but now what we do, we also tag the prefix with a community. And I've chosen 300 colon 1. 300 is our AS number, and 1 means hmm, transit customer, perhaps. We go to router E, and all we do now is we set up a filter that says, let any member of community 300 colon 1 out. So we don't look at the prefixes anymore. We just say, is the prefix a member of community 300 colon 1? If so, let it out. So when a new customer comes along, we just drop them into community 300 colon 1, and they automatically get announced out to the internet without any recycling of the BGP session. And now we can set up all the configuration on all the border routers, whether with our peers or with our transits, to do the filtering based entirely on communities. In fact, throughout my career with helping network operators, almost the first thing I've done is done a good analysis of all the filters and all the border routers, whether to upstreams and to peers, and we've replaced the static prefix filters with BGP communities, because this makes the network much easier to manage and much, much more scalable. And of course, usually when operators have discovered the power of communities, they all implement big projects to migrate away from static outbound prefix lists to using BGP communities instead, as they discover the great flexibility and scalability that they offer.